It didn't work. It worked. Okay. <laughs> you like story time? I like story time too. I'm really glad that my story time idea was so popular when I first started this. It makes me happy you guys enjoy my reading time. Hey, <laughs> Okay. I'm playing Amnesia and so far I like it a lot. Oh, are you playing the new one? The bunker? Oh, I love that one. I need to finish that one. So good. It's <laughs> so spooky. I gear up to the Amnesia games. They're some of my first horror games I ever played. Okay, I think I found one we might like. Spooky orphanage ones are usually pretty good. So, my experience at an abandoned orphanage in the UP verified by four others. The city that I went to college in, Marquis, and I had an abandoned Catholic orphanage. Just looking at the place, you could guess that it was haunted if you believe in that sort of thing. I was a skeptic before my experience, and I still sometimes question if my mind was playing tricks on me. But as you hear my story, they, they were five of us present, or there were five of us present that all witnessed the same thing. Anyways, the backstory is that the nuns who ran this orphanage back in the day were very strict and cruel. I remember one particular story. A young child went outside to play in the winter, despite the nuns having told the children not to go because it was too cold. This child then got pneumonia and died. The nuns allegedly displayed the child's body in the lobby of the orphanage as an example to the other children and to demonstrate that the child would still be alive had he, she, I can't remember the gender, listened. That's very Christian of them. Sure, their God loved that. <laughs> the story is that this child haunts the building as a benevolent spirit and often appears as a blue or green orb, generally in the basement area. Four of my friends and I decided to explore the orphanage one night. It was a bit difficult to get into, but we eventually managed. We had to enter onto the second floor just with how all the doors and windows were boarded up. Initially, nothing really happened, but it was a great, but it was a neat place to see. Then we went down onto the first floor. As we were walking down the hallway, I looked to my left and down a stairwell. That's when I saw it, a bluish green orb floating there. After a moment, it quickly darted down the stairwell. I immediately asked my friends if any of them had seen that, and when they said they didn't, I told them that I thought it was time to leave. None of them wanted to, so we continued down the hallway. As we approached the end of the hallway, there was a large room right at the end that looked like it may have been a classroom or something. Suddenly, I heard what sounded like children whispering coming from the classroom. I could tell that everyone else was startled too, and one of my friends said, Alright, it's time to go. After we got out of the building, we all recounted what had just happened. All five of us heard these whispers. If it was just me, I think my mind was playing tricks on me, but five of us heard it. That was pretty much it. Apparently, the orphanage is now an apartment complex. That's gotta be one haunted apartment. Hopefully, the story doesn't trick me out. It's 4 a.m. My only company is an aloof husky. <laughs> hey, I got a husky too. I love the ambience in the background music, but it's louder than. Oh, is it? Thank you. No one said anything earlier, damn it. <laughs> uh, how about that? Turn it down some. I learned the hard way that light doesn't even stop that thing. I had the generator on and it opened the door like, Oh nice, I can see you better now. <laughs> I thought the light stopped it. I didn't know that. That's good to know. Oh man, I was feeling so safe. <laughs> Adios, Krishna. Thank you. I 
actually, I did a post on Reddit a little while ago asking people if they want to share their stories. Let me see. I think I have some good stuff there. Whoops, that's Palea. Uh... Okay, here's one. My cousin kept bothering me to come over to her house. I'll probably drop a few in the Discord. Which channel would be most appropriate? Uh, let me take a look. I think I actually have a channel. I should have a channel if I remember to do it. Tales from the Beyond. I made sure to pin you in it so you can find it easier. That's for the suggested stories that you'd like to have read on stream, but... You're welcome! Alright. My cousin kept bothering me to come over her house. I hadn't seen her since we graduated from high school, so I wasn't in a hurry to rush over there way out into the woods of te East Texas either. Finally, after many months, I figured she wasn't going to stop asking, so I went. I showed up and we chatted for a little bit before we sat down to eat dinner. She pr eat the dinner she promised. It was a good meal and we chatted more. I asked about everyone and she told me about her son that offed himself. I never even met him or knew what happened. She was so a little teary-eyed when we went to sit in the living room and get into the more things, and as I was sitting there listening to her go on about her life since high school, I noticed a smoky gray cloud starting to come, start coming down the hallway behind her, where she was sitting in her chair. I thought at first the cloud was going to go into an open door behind her, but instead it started to come up behind her and cover the top of her chair she was sitting in with these laser-like white eyes coming out of it. It seemed to have ribbons of smoky gray bands winding themselves around each other, and whenever there was a bee or a break in the ribbons intertwining, the light would just shoot out from there, and that kept repeating all around the cloud as it was about to descend on her. Just when I thought it was about to touch her, I raised my hand to point, but then all of a sudden it, it stopped and went back behind the chair where I couldn't see it. My cousin, of course, saw my reaction and asked me if I saw something or, was, or what was going on with me. I tried playing it off and told her it was nothing, and just when I was about to finish speaking my words, I got caught up in my throat as I saw whatever it was retreat from behind her chair and go back down the hall and around a corner. My cousin asked me if I was okay. I told her I was fine, but that there was something in her house. I noticed after saying that the cloud poked around the corner and gave a peek down the hall towards me. I kept talking to my cousin, telling her what I saw when it just came out from behind the corner and went into the room behind my cousin and disappeared. That was enough for me to see as I told my cousin whatever it was lived in that room she was sitting near. That's when she told me that she had been suspecting that was the case as she continued. She told me more about the things that had been happening in the home and that she was compelled to call me for the reason of figuring out what it was. I told her it would have been nice if she would have told me something before I had got there, but she brushed me off. I let her know it was getting late and I needed to go back home because it was already dark and raining and I was out in the woods where darkness comes way before it does in any other place. We started the car from we started the car when I had a vision of a short red haired woman holding my hand as we walked to the car and as I got in I felt something else get in the car with me. The drive, the drive trying to leave this mud road, air, mud road area was made more difficult by the presence in the car with me. It wanted to drive the car, and to make things worse, it kept blurring the road next to the ditch to the point I ran off the road twice before finally agreeing. When I got back home, my girlfriend immediately felt something was different as soon as I walked in. The woman had followed me home all the way. She did her best to play it off and even tried helping me in the kitchen cooking for a picnic the next day until she saw some things move on their own and the vent fan came on and couldn't be turned off. She left the kitchen when that happened, but stood nearby as I kept going, her being too afraid to enter again. That's when she had her hair pulled and decided she was going to her room and I could deal with whatever was going on. When she saw, or when she left, I saw a woman standing in front of my stove, short red hair, wearing an apron and smoking a cigarette. She told me I didn't know how to cook. 
so I let her do that too. Funny thing, she cooked a pretty good potato salad. The next day we had the picnic and the spirit left. When I got home, I called my cousin to ask her if she knew who the woman was based on my description, because I had never seen the woman before. After I finished, there was a long pause and some crying, and she told me I'd perfectly described her grandmother right down to the smoking while she cooked. I had never met her grandmother, but she told me a lot of things that I was to tell my cousin about. I don't know about that story, but it was an interesting one. That's actually the longer post that I got in response to my thing on Reddit here. Oh, I should change my info on my streaming if I forgot to do that. Here's this other one I got for submission. Oh, it's weird that she'd be able to move so much as a ghost. You never know, I suppose. I actually, um, I've heard of stuff like that a lot. Attachments are very common. People or ghosts can attach to a person, especially if invited. They can attach themselves to objects, things of the like. I do believe in wandering spirits too, but I hear most commonly about, um, attachments. And ghosts can follow people home. Which is why I'm like paranoid of graveyards and stuff. I love cemeteries. There's something peaceful about them. Some are very creepy. But otherwise, I usually get this peaceful feeling. But I'm always paranoid of accidentally bringing something home. I meant like being able to make a whole meal. Oh yeah, I don't know about that one. Unless like she guided him maybe. There's just something about that story that seems a little bit far-fetched to me. Interesting read, though. <laughs> right, I'm totally fine with what happens with this story, so here it is. So about a year ago, I was left home alone. I brought both of my pets upstairs and was on my phone. When I heard the floor creaking, just like someone was walking up the stairs, I thought of... I thought, uh, oh, it must be my pets, and then looking down, seeing one of them right next to me and one sleeping in my arm. I got scared and called my mom, then I saw the door slowly open, I freaked out, so did my dog. I did feel a weight on the mattress slash bed, like someone was walking on it. I freaked out and my mom got home, but it, was, it has now happened more than once. I also have a Ouija board, and I had this nice friendly ghost tell me they, that they saw another ghost around me both of the times. This did freak me out though that I only stay at my desk when I'm home alone so I'm closer to the exit. I hope this wasn't too long. Thanks. What are your guys' thoughts on Ouija boards? I won't go near them with a hundred foot pole. <laughs> you never know what's gonna come through those things. I don't like them personally. Oh yeah same. I, I think they're dangerous. I think they're really dangerous. Even the plastic toys are a hard pass for me. Uh, but what bothers me is that uh, Ouija boards are sold as game boards and toys and stuff. As a family thing and just, mm -mm. no. A lot of people are adamant that it's all like psychological stuff, you know, brain playing tricks on you. But I don't know. <laughs> I've heard some really scary things coming out of those boards. I have no problem touching them. Yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> you don't fear anything, Python. <laughs> You're also a chaos gremlin, too. <laughs> Alright, it's all fun and games until something happens. Oh, exactly. Those paranormal games, too. I fucking hate hearing about them. Those freak me right out. And then this person I used to hang out with quite a bit a couple of years ago, um, he was big in the paranormal and stuff, and he knew a lot about those paranormal games, and so now whether he played them or not, I god, I hope not, I don't know, don't want to know, but, um, remember him telling me about one where, um, you go into a house, everything's really dark, no light, and you do this 
incantation or whatever. I call them incantations, so like a rhyme. And um, and he um, said that basically these people would invoke this evil spirit and they would have to play hide and seek with it. And you had to make it until sunrise, hiding from it without being found. And apparently there's accounts of people getting like whole ass TVs chucked at them and things like that. Just mm -mm. makes my skin crawl. <laughs> When it happens, I will love it even more. <laughs> Python. <laughs> Python's someone who go toe to toe with a ghost. My younger cousin messed with one and woke up with three scratches across her back. Shake my head. Yeah, that's why I don't touch them. Just nope. And when it, when it's harming you physically like that, you know it's nothing good. <laughs> I don't even like being in the same room as a Ouija board. It's just nope. Oh, is it the, I think so. I'm not sure the, what the name of it was. I don't remember if he gave the name. I think it's the hide and seek alone. What's the first one, though? Is it the same thing, just different name? Both do sound really scary. <laughs> no, people fuck with things that they don't even understand. Like, they had no business fucking with the paranormal. Oh, no. No. <laughs> that sounds worse. That sounds a lot worse. The things people do is so scary. I think you win by not being caught. <laughs> How long would that even last till daytime like the other one? Oh my god, no. From a fitting for the name, honestly. be pretty quiet with wherever you hide. <laughs> Don't like that one bit. The things people do, though, I bet you people have gotten hurt. If not outright. And alive. Ugh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> people be crazy. That is not fair. Not at all. <laughs> That's evil in itself. 
No, no. <laughs> Oh man, I don't even want to know. No. <laughs> it sounds pretty demonic though. That's worse. I have a phobia of dolls and puppets. I don't like that. <laughs> Let me guess. You gotta hide from the doll. No. All the no. <laughs> Hide and seek with it. You have to use a sharp object so you can take it, and it can take you. What? Why a sharp object? What? My family had a band hall dolls in this house. That their heads would turn. You'd hear scratching from the closets they were in. Just not fun. Your family sounds like uh, they're a magnet for spirits. When I was a kid, um, I had a really creepy porcelain doll that I saw it in my dresser and I could not look at it. I don't remember anything happening with it, but I think that's where my phobia started. <laughs> it even had like teardrops painted on its face and stuff and just, mm, I don't know, it was freaky. I always had my back turned to it when I went to bed at night. Oh god, I, you're braver than I am. I won't even look at that shit. They, they, they make me anxious. <laughs> I love spooky shit, but there's some stuff I won't even poke my nose into. It is insane the things people will do, though. People really do fuck around and find out. Girl seeking in the max right and it's too late when they do find out it is honestly best outcome is to come out kind of banged up <laughs> worse they um they get unalived he feels how it goes you know even with like ghost hunting and stuff when you're going out to investigate you need to protect yourself somehow some sort of spiritual protection and things like that there's so much that can go wrong even with that and to never go alone the living is a lot scarier than the dead <laughs> yeah people that play around with the paranormal rituals and games and stuff that is the extreme adrenal lynn junkies i feel <laughs> And not the way to go about it if you're looking to get to get rid of your skepticism to want to prove to yourself something's real. Would you ever go to confirm haunted hotels and like? Oh, absolutely! I think that'd be really neat. <laughs> 
That I would do. I've always wanted to go to haunted locations and stuff. I'd love to explore that shit. Sadly, I don't got friends as adventurous as I am. <laughs> Python, we'll go on a road trip. <laughs> There's one four hours for me, but no one I know is willing. Oh, I feel that. My, my IRL friends. No way could I ever convince them to do that. A couple of years ago, though, uh, it was during COVID, I went out with a buddy and we drove around in the back roads in the countryside here in the prairies and um, we explored abandoned houses, abandoned towns. So spooky. I mean, just love the vibe. I took a bunch of pictures too. The photography was amazing. Nothing haunted though. And it's booked year round by ghost hunters and stuff. Oh, that's amazing. I would love to go to something like that. I would love to ghost hunt and investigate and stuff. What I don't like with some go with a lot of ghost hunters though is they um I well I don't this is me personally with my spirituality and all that stuff and I take the stuff seriously I I don't believe in antagonizing the spirits you're asking for trouble <laughs> you do so oh you guys are tough I'd never go to abandoned locations <laughs> it, I would never do it alone it's why I did it because like I said earlier the the dead is a or the living is a lot scarier than the dead Python Raven ghost hunting adventures let's do it we'll create a YouTube channel Python We'll go back and forth between America and Canada. <laughs> I'd be the first sub, sign me up. <laughs> uh, that'd be so much fun though, I wish, dude. I hear Connecticut, uh, Connecticut, blah, 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 Connecticut, 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 there we go, is <laughs> that's for haunted buildings. I've heard about that too. Insane Python, I would be so down. It's always been something I wanted for years is to ghost hunt and explore allegedly haunted locations. Would we go to haunted forests? Oh man, I know. I feel like that one's sketchier. The things that lurk in the forest seem to be like it's shit you don't want to fuck with. <laughs> People go missing and stuff doing that shit. It would be interesting, but I'd be scared. <laughs> Yeah, like, what if we disappear or something eats us?
It's okay, I'll be there. <laughs> you can be my meat shield. How about that? <laughs> Maybe we'll meet Bigfoot Python. Watch, as soon as something crazy happens, you're gonna turn around and see me already running for the hills. Fucking probably. <laughs> The camera pans. All you see is Python's backside and he's running for it. It seems like our first adventure is going to be a wild one. <laughs> Lots of screaming. <laughs> so much for the meat shield. She just turns into bait. I got little legs too. I'd definitely be the first to go down. <laughs> the old switcheroo. Python, I'm pretty sure you're much bigger than I am. <laughs> it should be the other way around. <laughs> You got more of a chance to toe off with something. I'm screwed. Whoops. The hidden button I wasn't supposed to hit. That's my old screen. There we go. I have some warm milk to help my throat. Comfy enough to sleep. I'll catch you all next stream. It was a lot of fun. Good night. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was definitely a lot of fun. Take care of yourself and sleep good. See you next stream. First episode title will be Python wrestles with the walker in wits. <laughs> Real metal. <laughs> oh, that would blow up too. <laughs> we go viral. I think I found a another interesting story to read. Confirms that walkers are not Russell ready. <laughs> that would be the switcheroo on them. Instead of them attacking you, you'd be attacking them. <laughs> they would not be prepared. I'm just full on tackle the motherfucker. Jump on them from the trees, spider monkey. 
<laughs> That's the way to win, just spider monkey them. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly. <laughs> See, that's how you defeat paranormal entities, guys. It's gotta catch them off guard. <laughs> Square up. See, this is supposed to be a Singapore night safari ghost story. This sounds interesting. This story is submitted by one of my readers for my blog, and she has given me the permission to share it. I am pretty sure many of us have heard of ghost stories revolving around Mandai, but there are very few who share stories about the sightings at the Singapore Zoo and the night safari. This incident happened to myself back in 2010 or 2009, if I remember correctly. Back then, Night Safari had a Halloween special, and in my opinion, it is way scarier than the Halloween Horror Nights at USS. We had many decorations from painting haunted dolls, Chinese zombies, realistic tombstones, and many more. The main theme was spooky tales of Asia or something along those lines. I was working there back then, and there were there was many ghostly encounters that was reported to us, the staff. The reason why I say reported is because many of the guests do not know that they actually encountered something. Here are some of the stories. Firstly, my personal encounter with something, or with, with a supposedly realistic Pontianac. Back then, I was one of the staff roaming around the, co the compound near this boardwalk. I forgot who I forgot what it was called, but it was something along those lines. When I was there, I frequently received this compliment that the decorations on the trees looked realistic. Initially, initially, I just smiled and nodded to thank them for the compliments, but suddenly, I thought to myself, what is this decoration so many people are attracted to? After about four to five compliments, I was approached by this couple. I am not sure whether they are Japanese or Korean, they said to me in English. The fine lady, very good. That's when I realized that it is not any decorations. There was no flying lady involved at the uh, at all, and in my mind, I immediately thought of the Pontianac. I wasn't really scared since there were a lot of people there, but I definitely had the chills of being in that area. The second story happened to one of my friends who was working at the train attraction. If I'm not wrong, it's called the Train of Horror during the Halloween event. What she experienced was similar to me, but it's way scarier. She was one of the scare actors there, and as usual, they will naturally start jumping, start jump scaring the guests. The creep started coming when one of the tourists on the train said to his friend, These two are by far the scariest ghosts we've seen on this ride. She thought to herself, These two? She was alone there the whole time, and at first she believed that the tourists were playing a trick on her. Slowly, she realized that some of the tourists were recording something else each time they passed her zone. Instead of pointing the camera to her, they are pointed to the area behind her. The last story is a famous one, but I just thought of sharing it since it is one of the more creepy ones. No one told me the story specifically, but I managed to eavesdrop the conversation between the other staffs. They were making jokes about how some of the scare actors were really into their role and one of them even decided to sit on top of the tram. However, none of them did it. The drivers insisted that they clearly saw someone sitting, but no one admitted to it, or maybe they were there was actually no one there. I have more stories that I have heard related to paranormal sightings in the view in the zoo and the night safari, but I will save it for next time. Hope you should hope you could share my story to your readers and I hope the stories manage to scare you. That's pretty freaky. Ghost thinks it's haunting you, but in reality or it's hunting you, but in reality it's being hunted. <laughs> Hunter turns to prey. The ultimate switcheroo.
Okay, this could be another interesting one too. Monsters Among Us. Long story ahead. This is a story according to my mother's experience when she when she was a teenager living in a remote village in one of the islands in the Philippines. This happened in the 70s. My mother told me when she first got into high school she had a seatmate who shares the same name as her. Other than their names, my mother recalled they also shared the same interests with music and arts. They instantly clicked and became friends. One day, my mother's friends skipped school without notifying their teachers. It was a small village, and most people already knew where each family lives. My mother, being a good friend, thought to visit her friend's house after school to check up on her. Before she got to her friend's house, which is located along the riverbank, several of her classmates stopped her on the way, telling her to never go to that house. My mother said, why though? And her classmates said, because they eat people. Now, this is not new to my mother. She knew about these rumors at the village, but she never believed these types of accusations. She even shared lunches with her friend. The food they shared didn't taste weird. Her friend acts like every other normal person, so she treats her like anybody else. My mother went ahead despite the warnings of her classmates. Now, keep in mind that it all happened around 4 or 5 in the afternoon. The sun was still up and it was still bright in the riverbank. My mother wasn't scared at all from uh, at all until uh, until from afar. She was a woman crouching, or she saw a woman crouching at the riverbed, shallow part of the river. She initially thought this woman was washing clothes or maybe peeing at the river. This woman had a long frizzy white hair and had long frizzy white hair and appears to be wearing a long black dress, with its hem already wet by the wither, by the river water. My mother kept walking, but when she came closer, <coughs> hey, no, <up. coughs> we're good. When, oh crap, when she came closer to the woman, she heard this woman was talking to herself. The woman was covering her face with her palms, whispering, I hope the, sets, the sun sets soon. I hope the sun sets soon, over and over. This scared the shit out of my mother. She began sprinting to my grandpa, my grandparents' home. Back home, she thought the woman she saw could have been a person with mental illness, so she so she tried to forget about it and just slept. My mother lives in a Nika hut. There's, their source of light was only a candle lamp, and they did not have a mattress. They sleep on the bamboo floors with several cracks on it. At, at 12 midnight, as my mother thought, she felt movements under the floorboards. She was lying with her back on the floor, with but she could feel something or someone is crawling underneath. Ugh. That's when in her, that's when in her peripheral, she saw a long bony finger slowly emerging from between the floorboards. The fingers were poking in and out of the floorboards as if it was looking for something to feel. It went away for a bit and my mother thought it was gone until my mother felt the fingers now poking on her back. Then it felt like the fingers were digging into her skin, pinching her. It was so painful she could not breathe. She thought she couldn't even make a sound because she was so scared. All she could do was endure the pain and cry silently. That's when the house cat, the hero on the story, bolted outside knocking down the candle lamp walking or waking my grandparents. My grandfather, a hunter, took a bolo, uh, machete, and chased the house cat outside as it appears to be fighting something. That's when my grandfather saw this big black bird trying to get away from the claws of the cat as it turned into a freaking wild boar before fleeing. My grandfather, even in shock, shouted, don't ever come back here, I will hunt you all. My grandfather guarded the whole house, making rounds all throughout the night until sunrise. My mother never saw her friend since then. Oh shit. That's fucking creepy. I can never sleep on a floor like that. Oh, nope, nope. <laughs> I noticed uh Philippines always has some pretty spooky stories.
They do, and their urban legends are even more wild. Right? Their stories are the scariest. Middle East stories are also very horrific and creepy. I don't- I feel like the Americas aren't as wild in their, uh, their spooky stories. It's always other places though, like Asian countries or the Middle East. Here. Can read a couple more before we end for the night. And I'm just skimming one sec, guys. <laughs>
soon. I forgot how hit and miss these stories can be. If anyone has any like spooky subreddits to um recommend, definitely let me know. Now, I'm always hearing stories about the Appalachian Mountains, and I saw a video of someone who, uh, I, I guess it's um, it's a site you can go to where you can figure out where certain parts of the earth might have looked like back in the age of the dinosaurs, and apparently the Appalachian Mountains ha have been around for a very, very long time, and I think always above sea level, if I remember correctly, do not quote me on that. But apparently the area is supposed to be like really ancient. You know, I'm always hearing stories about the, the place there. I don't think I'm finding any new content though. I think I might call it here for the night then. We went for about technically seven hours, I think, actually. Yeah, we went about seven hours. It's a big area. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of crazy things live there. Same. I hear lots of crazy stories. It sounds like that place is chock full of creatures. <laughs> lots of ancient history. It would be an interesting place to visit, as long as you don't go missing. <laughs> yeah, like, apparently a lot of people are superstitious living in that area. Not everyone, this is just stuff I've heard from stories like on TikTok, of course, and forums and whatnot, but, um... I hear a lot about people will, uh... always keep their windows closed and covered and doors always locked which you should be doing anyway even i i don't even like sleep in my window uh uncovered and uh that's where i learned the rule from was uh if you thought you heard it no you didn't if you thought you saw it no you didn't <laughs> You're supposed to walk away as slowly and calmly as you can without acknowledging whatever you thought you heard or saw in your encounter. Otherwise you turn to pray or something like that. 
No, same. I'm too paranoid for that shit, too. Never mind creatures. I don't want people wandering in. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm scarier. Always lock your doors and windows, guys. I've heard about that too. Whenever my wife hears things here at the house, I tell her just ignore it. Yep. Always. Especially if you think you're hearing your name. <laughs> yeah, the second you acknowledge it, you've given it power or something like that, I think is what would said. Which makes sense. Best not to entertain it. <laughs> A couple days ago, she was on the computer and heard me call her name. Even our dog got up and started looking for her, but I was at work that day. Fuck that. I'd be so spooked. It, you know it's something to you when even the animals react to it. My rule where I live here is um, if my dog doesn't react to it, nothing's there. <laughs> and if it does react to it, I just try not to, not, not to acknowledge it. There's some family friends. Um, we don't spend as much time with them anymore, but I remember when I was younger and we were at their house um, one night hanging out and um, she, our, one of our friends, she was telling us about how a place she used to work. Actually, it was the... No, sorry. It was a house they used to live in years ago, like a very long time ago now. And um, the house was haunted like she would sometimes see a figure walking across the kitchen and stuff and she or, or things like cupboards and stuff would be open like the typical shit right and she fell asleep on the couch one night and her husband was working lately like, he wasn't home yet and she woke up to a figure walking across like the kitchen so she saw like this shadow and she was fine with whatever was in there until it showed itself and she got up she goes look i don't mind you being here but I don't want you scaring me and I don't want you showing yourself to me. And nothing happened after that, she said. She said her batteries like that was that. <laughs> yeah, she was freaked out more because it was my voice. I would be too. Weren't you saying that you thought there was something outside your house too? You were like ready to tow off and everything? And I agreed. I don't like everything's fine until you start seeing shit. I don't want to see anything. <laughs> you know the thing that sounded like my dog? Yeah, I wonder if it was that. <laughs> That's freaky. That is so freaky.
Maybe. I just told her it's okay, babe. The house is just getting ready for spoopy season. I'm sure she was impressed with that. <laughs> Posture check. Hey, Mai, you're still here. Thank you for the reading. I'm no longer shrimping. <laughs> And I will accept that reading. You know, let me complete it. Done. <laughs> yeah, just the house getting ready to celebrate. It's fine. Yeah, as soon as we hit August, it's spoopy season for me. I love the vibe of fall. It made her laugh and put her at ease. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that always helps, honestly. Then, um, this was a couple years ago. Again, another one of my spoopy stories and personal experiences. Um, this was a partner at the time. And, um, I was over at his place. And at night, his house would get really, really fucking creepy. Like, I, I don't know, just, it's hard to explain, just... This cool dread would just wash over the, the place. It, it was weird. It seemed like the dark was, like, darker. I don't know. It was odd. I didn't like it. My first time walking into his place when we were just talking friends at that time, um, my media thought, without even thinking, was, I don't like your house. <laughs> and I caught myself and I apologized. He thought it was because the layout was weird because it was a very old house and there was a bunch of add-ons added to it over the years. Because it was rented out and stuff. But it, that wasn't it. I just didn't like the vibe. <laughs> it just didn't feel right. But uh, I would go visit, right? And I we would hang out. We watch movies and stuff. And I and I remember, I can still see the layout of this goddamn house. And, and fucking, so there's so you walked in. There was kind of like a a porch area, and then you walked into the living room. And from the living room, there was the kitchen. To the left of the kitchen led into this weird little hallway that led to the bathroom and um so i had to go to the bathroom so of course like i i had to cross through the kitchen and into the bathroom from there and as i'm walking through like the lights are off because we we're watching movies and stuff but i saw this like it was like a darker spot in the kitchen in the corner and it was just standing there and i just assumed they had like a mop and a bucket or something there you know like maybe they had to clean something up earlier that day because he had a roommate and uh, I went to the bathroom, my thing came back, and I never thought anything of it. Like I kind of wondered because I didn't really like looking at it, but it was like, whatever. It's just something there. When I went over again later, and it was during the day, I was taking a look at his around his kitchen that we were sitting, and I said, "Do don't you have a a, a mop in, in a bucket somewhere?" Like I could have swore I saw a mop in a bucket here the other night. Did did you and your roommate ever? use this you have to clean up at some point and he looked at me and goes no <laughs> nothing we had to do the last little while and i told him what i thought i saw when i was over last and he says yeah no we did no cleaning that day and then he started telling me about how his place was haunted and stuff after a while because i was starting to talk about things i was experiencing and i was like you know i'm not coming here anymore <laughs> i'm not staying in the night nothing <laughs> it got so freaky but I think I saw something, like, standing there. It didn't like it. Not at all. It was a really bad, nasty feeling. Like, lights would turn off on you and stuff. There was no electrical issues. It was just a creepy little house. And then I found out later that apparently, um, the house next to that one, um, I don't remember this from when I was a kid either. But apparently it happened. There was a murder that happened. Like, there was, like, a, a murderer that lived there. And he got caught, like, years ago. So I'm wondering if there's something nasty lurking around there from all that energy. And it was over in that house. Yeah. Very freaky, though. I hated that place. <laughs> Yeah, it was all the nope for me. 
it, and things were getting worse. Like when I'd spend the night, I had like really restless sleep and I like, I remember thinking something was attacking me, it was coming at me and I scared the shit out of him one night in the middle of the night because I shot up and I pressed myself back against the wall like, oh my god, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty freaked. <laughs> and that's about when I decided, like, you know, no more overnights. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it would have surprised me either if it was stuff he invited in, though, because I think I remember him, like, admitting to dabbling and shit and like he had a Ouija board someone gave him too that had a lot of nasty crap attached to it and just it was no bueno all of it was no bueno <laughs> I like spooky stuff but I can do without spooky stuff like that as long as it's not malicious we get <laughs> I remember when I was a kid when I first started experiencing stuff too though um it was smaller but it was definitely weird um i was in grade five however old i was then like this was years ago i'm 25 now and i was in grade five then and um i remember it was uh voting like, like we were having an election is election time so my parents left to go vote right and um my nan and i were sitting at the table and as i right after my parents left and walked out the door so there's this um plastic black plastic uh ashtray that was sitting on the nearby kitchen counter and as soon as that door closed that um ashtray flipped up as if someone hooked their finger underneath it and flipped it right up and they came back down and kind of like tilted and stuff before it finally sat down and my nan just and my nan and i just kind of stopped talking looked at it then looked at one another and we laughed because we didn't know what else to do or think and they just never acknowledged it right but it's really fucking weird i can still see the way it flipped up like there is no way wind did that <laughs> it was like someone just took their finger and tossed it up pretty weird Growing up, I saw a lot of crazy things in my house. I got somewhat used to it, but it still catches me off guard a lot. Oh, I bet, like, when you're not expecting something, especially when the experience is a little more jarring, it's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it sounds like you're a magnet for that shit, too, though. You know, I'm just like, damn, man. <laughs> Maybe you're sensitive. <laughs> it sounds like your luck to you, though. Attracting shit like that. My brother saw someone walking into the rooms even though he was the only one home. Oh, fuck that. I'd be parking myself in the living room or outright leaving the house until someone comes home. <laughs> I'd freak.
Yeah, I'd rather not see apparitions, personally. <laughs> we want to see full body stuff or partial stuff here. Yeah, God, no. So, I'm fine with experiences, but not like that. <laughs> Hear things or see something, move by something I can't see. Okay, but I don't know. Just apparitions. It, it, it takes on a different meaning for me. I don't even know. We just try to ignore it the most we can. That's a good call. <laughs> Don't want to encourage anything. I, I bet you though it'd be interesting if a medium ever were to take a look like a real medium. <laughs> I've always wanted to talk with an actual medium, but it's so hard to figure out who's genuine and who's not. Just, I don't know. Especially when your only way of like trying to find one is online. And then you gotta try to get them to give you info that no one else would know. And stuff they couldn't find on you. Yeah, yeah. I love mediums, but it's so hard to find good ones. Because I've always wanted to get a reading done. Or even my cards read would be cool. I'm always reading other people's cards, but I've never really had mine read. Well, Rain read my cards once before. Come to think of it. Okay, we managed to go for seven and a half hours. We did pretty good tonight for stream. I think I will call it here if I'm feeling up for it later. I'll, um... I'll be going live again if I'm able to. We'll see how I'm feeling later today. It's now four in the morning. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm hanging out. I love doing these spooky streams with you. We'll see, see what I'm in the mood for later what, if I go live again. But I think Drew's still alive, so I'm gonna take all three of you and drop you off with him. But I will see you next stream. Good night and have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.